Hi, I'm Candy Cooper, designer and blogger. And one of my favorite jewelry workouts is actually looking for something that wouldn't normally be used for jewelry and transforming it into a great pendant. That's what I did with this found object. This is called a retainer ring. I don't know, you find it in the hardware store. It's in with the nuts and bolts section. And we're gonna actually get a double uh, jewelry workout. We're gonna cover this thing in leather. So you're getting a leather workout today too. So the first thing I'm doing, I'm just gonna knot this on. And I'm using one to one and a half diameter leather. And I've cut about, oh, I don't know, maybe a little over a yard size piece. But these retainer rings come in all different sizes. And then we're just gonna use a half hitch knot to cover the piece with leather. So I've looped it under the ring. And then you're poking the end of the leather down through and pulling it snug. And then you're just gonna repeat and cover the whole ring. Once you get going, you can cut that annoying tail off. It's kind of poking, it's getting in the way. So we can trim that a little bit. Don't trim it all the way. And we're just gonna keep going. I'm using this metallic color. It's a little bit like a metallic green or bronze, but this leather comes in a ton of different colors. So you could use uh, you know, an opaque green or blue or whatever, or um, there's you know, more metallics too. I really love metallics, so that's what I'm using. I think it kind of shimmers and the contrast against the black retainer ring looks good. You know, one important thing I forgot to mention is because this retainer ring is steel, you'll wanna coat it with something like a beeswax or a matte um, a spray or something to seal in. So just in case it would get wet, it's not gonna rust. because That would be a bummer. Unless you want that sort of look. You could totally let it rust and then seal it. So I'm just gonna keep going all the way around and then when you're finished, you'll have something that looks like that. And to seal up the end, I just have one more knot. And then I'm gonna use this, um, this is like a super glue gel. And before I cinch that up, I'm just gonna put a drop of glue in a couple different places and pull that cord in snug. And Again, we're gonna leave that tail a little bit long for now because we can trim it once it dries, but we'll get that excess out of the way. And then do it for the other side. So now, um, one of my other favorite things to do is really customize surfaces with paint. So now we're gonna take this piece over here and we're going to just add a little bit of uh, a little bit more color, a, little, a few more layers. This piece also has a leather tassel, so we're gonna paint that too, just to bring it together. So I've got a huge brush, and what you're gonna do is dip your paint brush in the paint and then blot most of it off. We just want a little bit. We're not trying to go crazy here. Just a little bit. You can pull in some, pull in some copper here, or I guess that's more of a gold. The key here is using stiff bristles. Um, a, a, a softer brush is gonna go down in the cracks and I don't want that. I just wanna kind of graze over the surface. And you can kind of play around with that. If you're nervous, test it out on the side, you know, first to see what it's gonna do. So now I'm gonna do the tassels also. And add a few colors. That got a little heavy. If it gets heavy, just take your finger over and smear it out, no big deal. This is supposed to be fun. Okay, so you get the basic idea there. These paints dry really fast. So I'm just gonna bring these over. And now we're going to attach them to some chain and transform this piece into jewelry. I'm excited. Let me clear a couple of things out and I'll show you this, uh, how to put it all together. So the first thing I did was made some beaded links. And all I did was string my row of beads and I crimped one end into a loop with, um, by flat crimping. So I'm just gonna string another crimp bead. And if you're curious about what, you, what to use for, um, you know, sometimes beading wires come in all different diameters. So if you're confused, like what size to buy, just check the packaging and it'll say what size crimp bead or tube to use. Okay. So this today I'm using 0.024, 
and it's a 49 strand. So I'm just eyeballing. I want these to kind of be uniform. I love these check glass beads. Oh, they're so yummy. And now I'm just using chain nose pliers to go in here and flat crimp really, really good. You could also use your traditional crimping pliers, but I kind of like how a crimp bead looks when it's flattened. It kind of adds another design element. So I'm just gonna trim away that excess wire. And now we're ready to just start kind of connecting the dots. Um, if you look at this finished piece I have here, I've got a bunch of fr um, fringe chain. Chain comes in all different sizes. This would be a great way to use up those chain scraps. And I've gone ahead and pulled out some jump rings. So what you wanna do is use your, the end of your um, round nose pliers here to kind of pull out where you think the center loop is. And you wanna kind of get that stretched out and how this works is you're gonna use, well, this is probably like a six millimeter jump ring. And you're just gonna open it from side to side. Don't ever pry that thing all the way open. You'll never get it round again. And then I'm gonna hang a piece of chain just um, so it sits, oops, I didn't get the end link. You're gonna hang it um, so it sits behind the tassel piece and then just connect it to your Let's call it a horseshoe leather piece. And then you'll move to the next one. So you just wanna be kind of careful because you can overstretch the leather or you can scratch that paint a little bit, but you just kinda of wanna open up the loop very gently. And then we're gonna use, you can use whichever kind of chain you want. And I like to alternate between the brass and the, um, and the gunmetal just to add more texture and fringe. But you get the idea on how to connect your chains. So when you're finished, you're gonna have something like this. I love all that movement that's starting to happen. So now we need some more jump rings. And you're just gonna start adding your pieces and parts. So just to give it a more finished look, I like to add a spacer bead to the front of the um, loop on the leather horseshoe piece. I'll show you here in a second, just to give it a decorative look. And then you would come up here. And the cool thing, you could use a jump ring here, but these chain links are really sturdy. So I feel better about just opening a link on the chain and connecting it. You could make this piece short or you could make it long. I'm really into over the head necklaces right now, so I'm gonna make it long so I don't need a clasp. And I'm just gonna open another link of chain. So this will be the back end of the necklace. And goes together pretty fast, don't you think? I think the, the longest um, part is connecting all those fringe pieces, but you could connect a few pieces or you could connect a bunch. You know, I, I just love using up the scraps of chain for things like that. And now another short piece of chain. And you can see how those paints, like once it starts pulling together, you can see how those paints really tie in your beads. You know, even if you didn't have the perfect shade of leather, you could just wing it and use paints to make it all work. And then I'm gonna just connect this last brass um, bead and my necklace is complete. Let's take a look at the finished one just to um, see it all put together. I really love this gunmetal chain and leather mix with the glass beads.